Thank you. Um, and Minister, thank you very much for your statement. Um, Madam, the situation on the ground in Mazabuka, where these two entities used to operate from, suggests that the ex courier agreement, which in simple terms really means no litigation, has not yielded any positive results in terms of compensating the unsuspecting citizens who put in their money in order to get hefty interests. <clears throat> Minister, what sort of protection have you put for your citizens in the face of you, one, or rather the DEC and the NPA agreeing to go into an ex courier agreement which did not include the other party, meaning the depositor, in the current circumstances that ONO and COMSEF have remained closed to business, they have not been paying out the depositors because they bought these properties and vehicles, disposable things that you clearly put in your statement. What extra measure is government putting to make sure that this ex courier agreement is honored? The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. And I certainly appreciate the follow-up uh, question from the Honorable Member of Parliament for Mazabuka Central. Madam Speaker, the executive ag agreement has got a period in which the obligations that have been agreed to be honored should be honored. Period of 12 months. And that was done after protracted discussions, meaning the directors of these two entities have been given enough time, in which time they should be able to dispose of some of the properties which, which should have been treated as proceeds of crime. But they've been given time to dispose of these properties so that they can put their monies together and ensure that they pay all the subscribers. So it, it, it may, I, I did say that they are submitting reports, periodic reports which I referred to, uh, which they are submitting to the Drug Enforcement Commission. And if Drug Enforcement Commission is not satisfied with their performance, there are provisions that they can evoke in the agreement to make sure that they are compelled to follow what was in the agreement. And that agreement does not leave them free, uh, Honorable MP. Should they fail to honor, they will still be made to account within the options that are provided in the Excura agreement. So I want to assure the Honorable MP and uh, uh, to also request him that uh, drug enforcement is open for the members of the public, including the, mem mem the members of parliament who would want to follow through on what will be happening so that we protect the interest of uh, our people who have been affected negatively uh, as a result of uh, being roared into subscribing to these two schemes. So we, the DEC is uh, monitoring and receiving reports as to how far they've gone and what they're doing, measures they're putting in place to put the monies together. I thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Member for Livingston. Compelled to raise this point of order. On the Minister of Home Affairs, uh, Honorable Kampiongo. Madam, <clears throat> this offense that um, the directors of COMSEV and uh, ONO committed that of money laundering is a very serious offense under the penal code. And the last time I checked, it attracted, if found guilty, a penalty of 170,000 units or 10 years in jail or both 
where the case applies. In his last response, the minister described this casually as just a deal that went bad. Is it therefore in order to casualize such a, a criminal offense as a, and describe it as a deal that just went bad? I seek your ruling. My ruling is that the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs will take that point of order into account as he responds to the question that uh, the Honorable Member for Chiengi is about to pose. Honorable Member for Chiengi, you are on the floor. Proceed with your question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yeah, I was, what I was saying, Madam Speaker, was uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I will start by addressing the point of order raised by the Honorable MP for Mazabuka. Madam Speaker, if we were trivializing this matter, I wouldn't be standing on this floor. You yourself, Madam Speaker, permitted me this lot at the expense of other important business transactions of this August House. Why? Because you also saw the importance and the gravity of this matter. And the Honorable MPs, like I referred to earlier on, including my dear brother, Honorable MP from Azabuka, we are coming to my office asking for, uh, for the solution to this, to this matter on behalf of the people. So if we, we were treating this matter casually, certainly I wouldn't be standing here, belaboring to explain to my colleagues on the progress that has made on this matter. I only referred it to the deal because the people were ruled into this transaction. And there was a deal between the people and these, these directors. So things haven't worked well. And they were found wanting. And indeed, money laundering is a very serious crime. And I did also mention, madam, that had it been for the interest of the so many Innocent Zambians who are ruled on these schemes, these people would have been trotting between the, 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 the courts and their homes, as I speak. But the Director of Public Prosecutions weighed the matters and found it fit to settle the matter in the manner they've decided to settle in consultation with the Drug Enforcement Commission. So this is a very serious matter. As to the follow-up question from uh, the Honorable MP Chiengi, 